The SWIFT standard library has a function called sort, which is a part of the sequence type protocol. This function can be called by any type that conforms to the sequence type protocol, often an array or a dictionary. The sort function takes one argument, a closure expression indicating how the items in a collection should be sorted. In the end, the function returns a sorted array. For example, let's imagine we're at a silent auction and we have an array of bids that we'd like to sort from lowest to highest. Here's our array of bids, along with an array for the return value called ordered bids. The bids array will call the sort method, and that's where the closure expression comes in. Closure expressions typically take the form, in between curly braces, first you'll see the parameters being passed in, followed by an arrow pointing to the return type, similar to what you'd see in a function signature. Then the return type is followed by the word in, and then the statements to be executed. Back up here in the closure we're passing into the sort function, notice that there is no name. We skip straight to the curly braces. In between curly braces, first we write the parameters being passed in, which are ints. We're passing in two ints from the array each time. Sort always takes two parameters that match the type of the array calling the function. After the parameters, we see an arrow pointing to the return type. The return type here is a bool, indicating whether bid1 should be placed before bid2 or not. Next comes the word in signaling the beginning of the executable statements. And then the executable statement in this case is very short. It's just bid2 is greater than bid1. If bid2 is greater than bid1, then bid1 should go first in the sorted array. If we print out the results, the ordered bids array, we can see that the bids are in order from lowest to highest. Let's alter the example just a bit and say that the auction goers put in more exact bids. They put their bids in as doubles. How would our closure expression change? In this case, since the parameters are now doubles, we'll need to change the parameter types of bid1 and bid2. But notice that the return type and the sorting statement both remain the same. Let's do one more example for good measure. Let's say we're sorting an array of birth years, and we want to put the years in reverse chronological order. What should our closure expression look like? What should we place between curly braces here? Like before, we're sorting an array of ints, which means that the two parameters passed into the closure expression will also be ints. Let's call those parameters year one and year two. Next comes an arrow pointing to the return type. And remember that sort always takes a closure with the same return type, and that return type is a bool. Next comes the word in to signal the beginning of the closure's executable statements. And since we want the birth years in reverse chronological order, that means the bool should return true if year one is greater than year two. And over here in the sidebar, we can see our sorted array. Even though in this case, the array is sorted essentially instantaneously, you can see that the closure represents a passing of the flow of control. It's as if we're saying, here sort, take this chunk of code and use it when you need it. 